So I got a question from Jesse in the chat, which this is great. I love this right here. What makes M17 different than DMR? So I'm going to let one of you guys answer that because you'll be able to... I, I could probably answer that, but I, I'm sure you could do it better than I could. So you guys go ahead. Whoever wants to take that. I'll take it. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, physically, there isn't much different. Um, it is for FSK. Uh, it is CDMA. No, CDMA. Um, FDMA? It's not, it's not TDMA. It's FDMA. Thank you. FDMA. Yeah, yeah. that's huge. So, so so it's more similar to Fusion than DMR, but okay. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. more similar to Fusion, P25, those those mm -hmm. uh, two um, modes. But uh, the, the key difference for M17 is the fact that we're using an open source voice, voice codec by David Rowe down there in Australia called Codec 2. So mm -hmm. if anybody's played around with uh, FreeDV on HF, M17 is kind of the uh, VHF and up version of that. So there's a 3200-bit uh, uh, vocoder um, mode for Codec 2. And uh, we're, ap we're applying that into a 4800 bits per second uh, for FSK on VHF and up. Um, so even though we're only using 3200 bits, we have a couple of extra, was it 1600 bits that we can use for transferring uh, data, similar to how D-Star, you know, you get the slow data, the text messages as they're transmitting mm -hmm. and everything. We can do something similar to that. Um, so the main difference, yes, is that M17 uses an open source uh, vocoder and it's completely designed for amateur radio from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the commercial modes, uh, such as DMR, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, developed for commercial use. You know, you mm -hmm. can't program your radio uh, from the front panel, or at least you're not supposed to be able to, but, you know, us hams have been able to the, figure it the, out. The Anytone can. Yeah, yeah. the Anytone yeah. can, but, yeah. like, you have a <laughs> yeah. radio, commercial radio. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, technically, you can buy a pro, you can buy, for about the same price of the radio itself, yeah. you can buy a front panel programming package that will allow you to do that. So now you're into an H a 5 watt HT for about a grand or more, but, yeah, 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 yeah yes, yeah, but you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, everything that we're doing is is literally amateur radio from the ground up, so... Uh, everything from the firmware to the hardware to the operation of the radio to networking is with amateur radio in mind. So things mm -hmm. that uh, are not necessarily needed, such as, you know, talk groups, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that seems to be the biggest pain point for a lot of people um, is that that talk group aspect of DMR. We don't have talk groups. We have uh, reflectors, which are based off of XLXD, <clears throat> so it's um, similar to the way that D-Star operates. You know, you got mm -hmm. um, Reflector 50 Charlie or something like that. You know, we have Reflector M17 Charlie that we do our nets on. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, we're trying to make the firmware with uh, OpenRTX as friendly as possible. So that front panel programming, um, even the, the CPS software, assuming that we do a, a separate CPS software will be easier to understand, easier to program. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really the big difference between M17 and DMR is the ease of programming or the ease mm -hmm. of use and the fact that we're using everything open source as much as possible.